Great, thank you, SM. So, um, well, as an ex-banker, we don't much like taxes or subsidies, so, so that's one. <laughs> but, um, so I, I'm uh, Simon Dent. Um, I've worked for 20 years in uh, commodities, both physical and financial, uh, mainly in investment banking. But recently, uh, now an ex-banker, and um, recently now involved um, working with Ophelia on the business development. We're checking uh, which areas we can apply impact investment into beyond what we've done in our first plan. So I can... Ophelia Ecosphere is, uh, is a new impactor of an investment uh, manager, guided by principles that we think are pretty un uh, unique. Um, we see we can get competitive financial returns, um, but by keeping environmental and social assets. Our first fund has raised approximately 100 million euros, both from public and private investors, and is investing in landscape conservation, <coughs> providing finance, project expertise, and loans, mainly into uh, red projects uh, on a global basis. We typically invest for the long term, but the fund life is, is eight years. Um, and we work closely with all the stakeholders involved, but we're providing private capital into these projects. Our investment level is about $10 million um, per project. We do slightly larger and slightly smaller, obviously. Um, but our revenues are secured twofold. So one, by carbon that's generated for protection of standing forests under red, uh, and also by sustained agriculture or certified um, commodities, and potentially some eco services. So I'm not a fishery expert, I'm not a technical fisheries person, but we, uh, we do have a strong financial background. We are particularly experienced in project-related uh, management and investment. We, we started our business uh, within the bank looking at the uh, European Emissions Trading Scheme and the subsequent CDM, UN-based project scheme. Well, so these project-based um, carbon credit type of projects are very similar to what we see today, both in forestry and we think of fisheries. So, a theater is looking at what we can do with the impact investing model that we've learned in forestry and bring it to what we call C-steps. So, we believe that we can take in our investment rationale um, and apply it to a sustainable C-steps approach. Looking not just at the sustainable fisheries or the FIT projects, but looking um, at a multiple revenue streams, so waste, for instance, and ecosystem services. If it be an impact investment vehicle, we would look to make economic return but that economic return will be underpinned by applying best-in-class social environmental guidance. Uh, guidance. And we do that in the forestry fund. So today in the forestry fund, um, we have an ESG policy that is based on IFC principles. Uh, we have a quarterly reporting to our shareholders just on ESG. We have ESG metrics that we have to apply when we make investment decisions, uh, and that is um, assured by our governing body, our investment committee, and our expert. We wouldn't invest alone. So this is not us going out there and investing $10 million in a project and acting alone. We would invest alongside stakeholders, NGOs, local government, local communities, cooperatives. Uh, you know, we're bringing the financial capital, the private capital, but as I said earlier, we're the finance guys. We uh, will need technical partners, we need partners on the ground, we'll need uh, potentially uh, local government um, to work with those projects. So in no means are we doing this by ourselves. The private capital would be at risk. Um, it, it would probably have an upfront capex hunt element, so basically um, upfront to, to purchase uh, transitional finance, maybe to do um, manage access or buyouts or set up MPAs and things like this. And then there'll be a running cost of projects, particularly data enforcement, uh, potentially investment in the supply chain. So quickly, why do we think we can uh, do something in this space? And these slides may be a little bit dated, um, and I think you all, know, you all know the arguments here, but yeah, we see and recognize the oceans are important. Um, we, see, uh, we see and recognize that there are a billion people who are deriving that, you know, they're depending on fish for primary sources of protein, particularly in developing countries. Uh, we see that potentially you know, there is 90% of the people derive livelihoods from developing countries. So it's a significant demand in the market. Uh, as a note from us on the forestry side, we're also quite interested in the carbon side, the blue carbon side. 
And we think that that is a, a revenue stream that could be, uh, could be monetized as well. But I think it's also because of economically valuable. So you see here that you know, the wealth of the oceans is massive. I thought it was interesting that the trade of, uh, trade of fish trade was two times the value of coffee, and arguably coffee has recently done much more in the sustainability uh, sector than we have in fisheries. I think it's much more recognized from a consumer point of view. Um, but we see this as underpinning uh, the case to make where we can make a case to properly structured projects, um, you know, the financial strength of this market can underpin projects that can produce both sustainable and economic returns. So what is the challenge? Well, I think as you know, the FAO has said that 90% of the world fisheries are either fully exploited, overexploited, depleted, or recovered. So I think that's the challenge there. But we also think of wild capture fisheries particularly are a unique resource. I mean, it's subsidized mainly by nature. Um, it's got to make economic sense to then harvest sustainably to provide our resource for the infinite. So the investment case is simple from our perspective. Better managed fisheries are more profitable. Fisheries that can generate significantly more value, both economically and environmentally, if they're sustainably managed. So I think from our perspective, we have seen sustainable management principles work, for instance, in agriculture and forestry. Uh, and, we, and that has brought um, development capital, both private and public, in scale into those sectors. So you know, examples are fun. We've raised 100 million euros for public and private investors to invest exactly into forestry and, and agriculture. Uh, if you take the World Bank Bio Carbon Fund, that fund uh, is more than $300 million to invest in, in forestry. The UK government put $120 million into, into that fund. So I think uh, one of the challenges um, for the people who are active in the fisheries business is, that, uh, is to uh, generate the conditions to allow this investment. So given the depleted state of global fisheries, uh, you know, we feel that some of the management principles need to be urgent. So what are the investment opportunities that we've recognized? I'm sorry if that's a little bit, um, it's a bit hard to read. But clearly stock depletion and recovery. So um, you know, individual projects, individual species can exhibit significant stock recovery over a period, you know, an investable period of time, so two to five years. I think most investors are looking at a window of eight to 10 years to, to get an investment uh, applied and then return back. Um, so we can, we can put transitional investment in place, we can create the environment, the natural infrastructure for stock recovery, to move um, fishermen also to, to, to take the concept of sustainable fisheries. We also believe that there is a lot of operational efficiencies in supply chain. So we see particularly as we go to the small scale, highly fragmented supply chains, low investment, poor infrastructure, um, but your investment there can bring significant added value, particularly to the, to the land catch, you know, the value of the land catch, reduce volatility, uh, and enhance project communities and value to the, to the stock. We think there's an opportunity, as we're doing uh, in forestry, to work and engage ethical long-term retailers and brands um, that allow some certainty in price. Uh, we believe we could bring engagement uh, in that area. Uh, allows premiums to be captured around certifiable stock. Uh, and I think that's an important part. We also would like to see multiple revenue streams in our projects. I think this is important. Um, so again, we wouldn't necessarily just focus on a FIP and look for stock recovery. We would look to um, the projects where we can see multiple revenues. So basically blue carbon, waste, recycling, potential investment in technology, new gear, new nets, um, equipment, um, and various eco-services, you know, the, the dream of eco-tourism type structures. However, we do feel and recognize that uh, most successful projects are going to need some PPP involved. I think it's also certain that most projects are going to need uh, a public-private partnership. We're going to need some form of concessionary finance, maybe some technical assistance, potentially um, some political risk insurance, forms of guarantees and grants. Um, 
In the forestry fund, we have a, an interesting structure provided by the US aid that in certain countries and certain projects, we have a 50% uh, first loss guarantee on our projects that US aid would provide. And these are the types of mechanisms that prevail, particularly carbon and forestry, and these are things that can be used, I think, uh, to uh, accelerate fishery projects. And then the macro market, and some may, uh, some people in the economists may disagree, but you know, we believe that uh, you know, the seafood market is going to continue to grow. Uh, we, we feel that prices will show up for trend. I think uh, potentially you will see increasing demand for sustainable product and price premiums. Um, and if not price premiums, at least demand for um, you know, sustainable product that has good transparency uh, and, um, and a good story to tell. And we think that the macro market will underpin investments that we would undertake. What are the enablers? So I guess the first four are enablers, and the, and the last three are basically where the value chain comes from. So the first one, I think this has been said many times uh, in our meetings, but secure talent. Um, it aligns incentives and powers the fishery projects. It's, it's an absolute key to try to get any, any uh, real private investment flowing into uh, fishery projects. Technical data, you know, bankers, finances, we're all driven by data. We like forecasts, we like numbers, we want to see our return, we want to see uh, what a certain amount of dollars will do to the stock or it will do to the investment. Um, so, you know, we need technical data um, around these various projects. Investable entities, we need somewhere to direct the money. We need something that is, that is um, legal, uh, is going to be there for the long term, uh, that we can uh, relate to and work with. Uh, very important. Of course, governments, monitoring and enforcement are going to be important through the life of the, uh, of the project. And then all this leads to basically where we can create value. So improving stock yields, you know, supporting, you know, basically support the longer term yields and make the fish less cost to find the catch and basically increase the value of the stock. Um, increasing operational efficiency, I think this is important for us, so we see that there are a lot of gains to be made uh, under that type of heading. And then the mechanisms for capture and return. So you know, we obviously are going to look to be paid back and make a different return for our investors. I think there are many ways to do that and every project is different, um, but it generally relates to uh, a form of benefit sharing. Um, a lot of people are suggesting it's a debt only uh, structure, loan structure, but I think that there can be um, potential mix of many type of financial tools between equity and debt-like instruments. Um, and particularly if you're making investments, say, onshore and supply chain, that may be a much more negative type of solution. Um, but you know, the key thing is there is that we believe that there is a win-win situation for people to basically uh, invest in these projects, taking risk capital, um, and you know, through project performance and, and basically ownership of projects, People can um, can move to a sustainable fishery type of uh, level and create a return for the uh, for the investors, and the investors will exit, and then you have a sustainable project that should go through. So I just put this up to show a little bit of our thinking. So one project, um, we would like to see you know a project that covers much of this, and then we would build out from that. So you know, we could scale up, or we could do multiple multiple projects within a certain region. Um, so you know, the Bay of Bengal type stuff will be discussed. So and, and we talked about this, but you know, establish the type of juveniles, MPAs, and you know, look at the mangroves for revenue from blue carbon, sustainable agriculture. I think is important at a community level. Um, look at waste recovery, recycling. Um, of course, create the um, create the fit, managed access, the buyout type structure. Technology around nets and gear, enforcement and data are important. Look at the ecoservices, but very important supply chain investment and engage with with the um, you know, with the end users, the price points, and capture capture that. So quickly, what are the takeaways? So for us, the key takeaways I think is, as I mentioned, secure town and governance, key investment makers, credible data allows the investment framework and investment decisions to be made. 
you'll need to leverage private public finance tools to enable investment and scale. The project investment clearly needs to address the environmental and social issues that are the drivers of the public issues. We would like to see treating sustainable fishery projects as a whole. I think the whole is greater than some of the parts we see that in forestry. But we also believe the time is right to bring private investment into sustainable fisheries. Alongside public investment and basically um, other mechanisms, grant mechanisms that can bring out, but we think that there is a number of projects that would attract um, some private investment uh, and allow and accept, build capacity and accelerate the transition to sustainable um, fisheries. Thank you.